What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is 10 things Americans get wrong about America. We're not American. No. But it'd be interesting to see if we had got this wrong. Yeah. I mean, we may not even known about it, to be yeah. fair. Um, the first one says Independence Day. It's in the time there. So if you think about Independence Day, get wrong. And I think I know what it is. I, I've just said that. I've not, I promise I've not thought about this one bit until I've just said no. that. It's people think that technically the US became its, it became independent on July 4th when it was actually signed on a different date. Yes, it was. That's what it's going to be, wasn't isn't it? Wasn't it signed either later on in July or August I or earlier was, on in June? It was. We're about to find out. Yeah, we're about to find out, but I think we've just ruined the first one. <laughs> I yeah. didn't mean to do that, I just thought of it. Smash that like button if you enjoy this kind of content, smash that subscribe button as well. Make a tally. Let us know how many of these you already knew are. Yeah, how, how many you got wrong? Yeah. How many you got wrong? Too, you may have only got one out of ten wrong. So yeah. you got nine out of ten right. Fair play. Hopefully, we've got nine out of ten right. Have we got ten out of ten? What's the like goal? One thousand seven hundred and twelve. Smash that like button, guys. Get over that like goal. And are you ready? Yeah. Let's get into it. Ten things apparently Americans get wrong about America. Let's go. Ten things that Americans get wrong about America. Number ten. Independence Day. Independence Day, the anniversary of the publication of the Declaration of Independence of the United States. It's a big deal to the US, but well, which date is it? A lot of you would say there the 4th of July, but guess what? That isn't the true Independence Day at all. Mm -hmm. It's actually the 2nd of July upon which Continental Congress liberated the heck out of America. That's because it was on this day that Continental Congress voted for independence. It's believed that the occasion is celebrated on the 4th because that's the day when the revised version of the Declaration of Independence was adopted. It's all because of boring bureaucratic reasons. The fact that Americans celebrated this on the 4th would certainly come as a surprise of the Founding Fathers, especially John Adams, who wrote that the 2nd of July, 1776, will be the most memorable uh, poker <laughs> in the history of America. Just two days out. Well, <laughs> turns out maybe not as memorable as you would have liked, sir. But what may be even more surprising is that, according to a Maoist poll measuring public opinion and knowledge, one in four Americans don't know which country their forefathers actually declared independence <laughs> from. Spoiler wow. alert, it was us, Great Britain. Uh, yeah. Sorry about all that. 77% correctly identified Great Britain, but France, Mexico, and Germany were frequently given as answers in the poll. Wow. With some even suggesting Afghanistan, China, and Russia. They, they've got to be Number joking. Nine. Afghanistan. A couple of them have to be joking. You think you are liberated from Afghanistan? I get the France one, because France were technically open to that. I get the confusion. I've got to be joking about Afghanistan and stuff like that. Surely. Let us know what you think in the comments. The best country in the world. Subjective. According to the Pew Research Center, almost a third harsh. of Americans no, say that the US stands it's above all opinion. other countries in the world. Hmm. Sorry, guys, but this isn't necessarily true. The United States now ranks 27th in the world for healthcare and education, according mm. to Business Insider. These have both significantly declined from 1990, when the nation ranked sixth. According to Big Thing, wow. this is because America's scores declined in educational attainment, potentially as a result of a decrease in spending. The top spots for these categories were both occupied by Finland in 1990 and 2016. That's to add injury yeah. in the most recent United Nations World Happiness Report, the United States only just scraped into the top 20 happiest countries in the world, coming in 18th place. By the way, Finland yet again topped the leaderboard for that one, I'm not surprised. being the happiest country, country in the world to live in. And not even the famous US economy can make up for those downfalls anymore. Anymore. According to Huffington Post, the world's best economy now belongs to Switzerland, not Finland this time, with the states coming in third place. Well, the states is the best country being American, though, so you, I guess you have that at least. Number so, so, the best country is so subjective. Everyone's got a different opinion. It's everyone's best country, but I guess he's gone off like education statistics and healthcare statistics. But then, true, but then I mean, someone's like, going to say, saying, well, I take it off a military. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's, so like, it's like, like if, you, if he'd have said it's the best country in the world for healthcare, then you would have been like, well, no, no it's, it's not. not. You but can't, you can't say, say best, best country, country yeah. overall because... It's all just opinion, it's isn't it? What you think, isn't it? it? Definitely. It's like you could just change a ballpark every time yeah. someone denies you, but well, I've changed it to this. Eight. Oh, say can you hear? Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for our national anthem. You're probably very used to hearing that announcement at the start of most sporting or civic events in the States. The performance of the that. national anthem is an integral part of American culture and pretty much the epitome of Americanness. But ironically, the Star Spangled Banner isn't actually American at all. 
at least the melody isn't anyway. Uh. Now, to its credit, the words of oh, the I've anthem were before. written by American poet Francis Scott Key. They were originally yeah. about Fort McHenry and Baltimore, which successfully... I think it's a drunken, an old British drunken sailor's is, melody. Is, I think I'd it. heard that before. ...they fought off the British Navy in 1814. But the tune of the song, which has been used for other American songs as well, such as the Boston Patriotic Song and Adams and Liberty, was in fact taken from an old 18th century British drinking song. Yep, British. That hey, song took was to Anna Crayon <laughs> also drinking. Its composer was John Stafford Smith, and the lyrics were written by fellow Brit Ralph Tomlinson, president of the Anna Crayon Society. In case you're wondering, the Society was a popular gentleman's club in London whose members were dedicated to wit, harmony, and the god of wine. Not a bad place to rip off your national anthem, I suppose. Number seven, Torch for Liberty. At the end of the 19th century, 48 American states passed laws banning flag desecration. Most of okay, these early statutes prohibited showing contempt for the flag in any way, such as publicly burning it, trampling on it, spitting on it, or showing a lack of respect for it in general. So, most Americans therefore think it's a crime to disrespect the American flag in any way. But in 1989, that all changed, following the case Texas versus Johnson. Johnson had been convicted by a Texas court for violating a state law that prohibited the desecration of a venerated object, such as the US flag. The US Supreme Court eventually ruled that preventing someone from burning the flag is in fact a violation of the First Amendment. As a result, it affirmed the right to desecrate the flag as a form of free speech. Before you just start torching it willy-nilly though, the practice is still illegal in some special circumstances, such as at military funerals. Trump oh, yeah. himself oh, doesn't but necessarily agree any with funeral, I feel like that is a... Don't do it at all, but the whole point behind being so proud of a flag and so far is because you've got these military personnel who, again, huge, huge respect for, like we always say, are yeah. fighting for their life so you can be free in the country, and that's what we're flag I can't imagine anyone doing represents. that at a funeral. Why would you... I, I get people do do it. Don't one, don't do that, because, again, people are fighting for their lives for that symbol and the meaning you can be free, so don't do that. And two... A funeral, you've got to be messed up in the head to do that, surely. You have to be. With this right, though. In November 2016, the president tweeted, nobody should be allowed to burn the American flag. If they do, there must be consequences, perhaps loss of citizenship, or a year in jail. No word on that being instilled into law yet, though. He seemed to have bigger things to worry about. Number six, misquoting history. American history is full of iconic quotes that practically everyone knows, or at least think they do. But did you know you've probably got some of the most famous ones wrong? Let's exemplify the Apollo 13 mission in 1970, in which astronaut Jack Swigert delivered the iconic line, Houston, we have a problem. Yeah. Except he didn't say that. What he actually said was, Houston, we've had a problem. Not a grave oh. error, granted, but an interesting yeah. case of I the Mandela effect I nonetheless. Have, yeah. Just in the same way, Paul Revere never famously exclaimed the British are coming either. And nor did George Washington claim that he cannot tell a lie. This anecdote was concocted by biographer Parson Weems, who frequently made up anecdotes for his biographies, and this was likely one of them. Finally, in the Apollo 11 mission in 1969, when Armstrong famously landed on the moon, listeners back on Earth heard, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But Armstrong maintained afterwards that he actually said, that's one small step for a man, and that the A had been lost in transmission. So it turns wow. out many American catchphrases are just downright wrong. I mean, I mean it's not downright wrong, say, is it? It's a you letter. missed out on ass. <laughs> it's not downright wrong, is now it? Now that on. is clutching a straw. <laughs> Come on, I'm, I'm ashamed to be British at this point. <laughs> Number five. Not, not so, so wall to wall. What? On the 24th of October 1929, the United States stock market notoriously crashed, a date now known as Black Thursday. One of the biggest myths surrounding the crash was that investors jumped out of the windows of their high-rise office buildings after realising that they were financially ruined. It is true that the rate of self-inflicted death increased in the United States during the Great Depression, but that's across the entire nation, so not as a result of the stock investors on Black Thursday. So where did this awful rumour originate from? Well, on the day after Black Thursday, one man jumped out of a window of a high-rise building. Just one. Of course, such a tragedy made the news, but it was because of newspaper columnist Will Rogers that people believed this type of activity was much more widespread than it actually was. He wrote, when Wall Street took that tailspin, you had to stand in line to get a window to jump out of, and spectators were selling space for bodies in the East River, which, yeah, wasn't that true. Is brutal. This sensation is in circulation to this very day because of this one false report. Wow. Number four, pseudo-inventors. 
America has been home to some of history's most famous inventors. The Wright brothers and the aeroplane. Samuel Colt and the revolver. How about Thomas Edison and the electric light bulb? Well, actually, that one's not true. While Edison got the patent for the light bulb in 1880, leading us to assume the invention was his, its true creator was Warren Delarue. Delarue was a British scientist who created the device 40 years <laughs> like earlier. He's doing Although his name is probably <laughs> one of the biggest... <laughs> like, it's chill. <laughs> It's fine, man. It's fine. It's chill. We don't care that much. <laughs> yeah, it is just kind of like, no, well, no, no. no. The, did it first. The, the British did it first. Shut up. <laughs> what would be a world? Henry Ford did not create the first gas guzzling freeway speeding oh, car guess America, you did. that is the car. That achievement was the work of European engineers like Carl Benz and Gottlieb Daimler. Benz created his three wheeled vehicle with an internal combustion engine, and Daimler created his motorised four wheeled automobile with a gasoline engine. Both submitted their patents on the same day in 1886. What a chance before Ford released the same his day. First car in 1896. And, and Benjamin Franklin patents were a thing in 1896. I know. Like, what? Oh, as if. <laughs> definitely did not discover electricity by flying a kite in a thunderstorm. Electricity was already a known phenomenon in Franklin's time, since static electricity was discovered by the ancient Greeks. So, sorry, America. Number three. He's got something against the America. He game. has something against As them. any devout fan will tell you, Cooperstown is synonymous with America's favourite pastime, Baseball. That's because it was where the national sport was born when it was created by Abner Doubleday in 1839. But, yeah, guess what? This history is in uh, fact a fabrication conjured up in 1907 by the Mills Commission, who issued a report asserting that baseball was invented in this New York village. Their conclusion oh, was go. based on nothing more than a testimony from mining engineer Abner Graves, but it's been discounted by historians. Of course, baseball was based, no pun intended, on the English game of rounders, but the game as we I love today rounders. was in fact the brainchild of New Yorker Alexander Cartwright. Cartwright invented the modern baseball field in 1845 after playing a similar game on a plot in Manhattan. He then created okay. the New York Knickerbocker Baseball Club and he and his fellow players created the first rules for the modern game. The first recorded baseball game was in 1846 when Cartwright's Knickerbockers lost against New York Baseball Club. And then in 1858, the first organized baseball league was formed. Number two. I like how I also say I like how the first baseball team was called the Knickerbockers and the second one was Baseball Club. Like you'd assume the first one would just be he's buckled up. <laughs> Hard cheese. Hard cheese. Ooh. While the bald eagle like and American cheese. bison are officially recognised as the national animals of the United States, unofficially we'd say that Mickey Mouse That's is freak. definitely up there too. <laughs> Anecdotes say that Mickey was based on a mouse that Disney had trained to do tricks himself, while others say he first came about when Disney drew his pet mice when writing to his niece. According to Walt Disney himself, the idea of Mickey came to him while on a train in 1928. But the truth of the matter is, that's all poppycock, and that Disney did not create the iconic mouse. In fact, Disney as we know him today was actually created by Disney animator of iWorks. iWorks has been dubbed the Forgotten Man of Disney, and with good reason. After losing the rights to Disney's first creation, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, Walt asked iWorks to come up with a new character, and Mickey was born in 1928. But over the years, iWorks felt he wasn't getting enough credit for his creation and left the company. He did eventually come back, but he refused to work in animation again. Number one. Wow. In the beginning. I get how it's Let's cheese. end where it all began. Yeah, with the first I, was gonna say. I thought I was expecting like the American sliced cheese thing. Uh, yeah, I was expecting some uh, I guess maybe it's just hard look. It's mice as well. Hard look or something like that. Mice like cheese, don't they? Oh, uh, yeah. Switch on today, aren't you? It was bad. It was <laughs> George Washington or the sort of first president. According to Time magazine, 94% of those asked in a study remember George Washington as America's first president. But they're all technically wrong. He wasn't the first. In fact, he wasn't even one of the first. During the American Revolution, several presidents were elected by the Continental Congress. The first was Peyton Randolph, whose most notable achievement was the creation of the Continental Army. Then there was Thomas Mifflin, who was president between 1783 and 84. Among his achievements was that he oversaw the ramification of the Treaty of Paris. Then came John Hancock, who became famous for signing the Declaration of Independence during his time as president between 1785 and 1786. We won't go through all of them, but the difference here is that George Washington was America's first president to be elected by the people. This was in 1789, uh. when the US Constitution gave the rights for citizens to vote for the electors, who in turn vote for the president. But technically speaking, George Washington was not the first president of the United States. He was the 15th. So that yeah, to be fair, I would have probably said George Washington, just because when we've done like the revolution and stuff like that. Yeah, he's one that pops up all the time. But, uh, yeah, and he gave a whole speech about the US becoming, like having a leader who everyone picks yeah. and stuff like that. But now it makes sense of it. It's just one which has been voted in for yeah. and it previously had it. Smash that, but if you enjoy it, did you enjoy that? Yeah, it was good. 
few a I few think, bits in there. I was like, mm. I think he had a few issues with it, America. <laughs> I don't know why he had against two legends, but I enjoyed it overall. Um, a few dodgy ones yeah. in there as well, but some good ones. Yep. Let us know if you knew all them in the comments below or what you thought of the video. Smash that like button, guys. Smash that subscribe button. And what should we do? Have a fantastic day. And we'll see you, legends, in the next one. Peace.